you talked how difficult it was, and, and I've always wondered well, about how di you, know, you have to dredge up these experiences like left, right, and center to play, and how it affects you in your life, and how you can do that. And so that was painful, but you had another experience with a person who was also kind of a little odd, uh, and Marlon Brando, and, and, and who was a, yeah. A, a, yeah, yeah. And that's less painful, because Marlon, I know you love Marlon, and, and you worship him, yeah. And I still do. Um, and I'm still very close with the family. And Marlon became, again, like Hunter, although he didn't make me shoot a <laughs> nitroglycerin propane tank. But Marlon, Marlon and I met over the phone, because I wanted to do Don Juan DeMarco with him. And, um, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, so we met over the phone. We spoke for three hours on the telephone. I was in New York. He was in Los Angeles. I went back the next week. He invited me for dinner. We sat and we talked. And it was, we, we, we connected on many levels, uh, especially the fact that no one wants to be a novelty. <laughs> um, but one of the things that happened was we, I asked him about... Uh, it was a quote by William Soroyan that it's the pre basically it's a word quote. It's a preface of uh, in the time of your life, the play, which the play I I, I the, don't read the play. <laughs> read the preface. It, it's something that had touched me in a, in a large way, like a philosophical, like a the way to live your life, a real road map as to live your life. And so I asked him about it and he said, yeah, he knew, you know. And uh, so he said, how well do you know it? And I, so I began to recite it because I, at that time I had uh, memorized it. And uh, so I began to recite this preface in the time of your life. And uh, I got to a certain point and he finished it. Oh. Oh. Verbatim. And I was somewhat stupefied. I said, that's incredible. I've, and I pulled out my wallet and I said, I've carried this, this dog-eared thing that I had ripped out of a book. I've carried this for years in my wallet. And he said, hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> but he, and he, he got up uh -huh. and he grabbed a frame that was just by his bed. And he came to me and he showed it to me. And he had a very similar dog-eared, uh, folded, uh, well well used uh, version of the, it. Was the, it was the same thing that he had carried in his wallet for all those years. So there was this. He understood me very well instantly, and I understood him, and I was very lucky to become so close with the man. You know. But he, he, he said to you, he asked about how many films you did, I, in terms of yeah. thinking about characters. And yeah, the, that, was, that, was, that, that, that was quite a moment, because that's one of those things that's seared onto your brain forever, you know? And you know that the, the, the moments before you become smoke, um, it'll come to you. He asked me, uh, how many films, uh, John? <laughs> he either called me John or Johan. It was very rarely <laughs> Johnny. And he, he said, how many films do you uh, average per year that you do? And I said, I don't know, maybe two or three. He said, no, that, that's too much. <laughs> so I said, well, why is that too much? And he said, because we only have so many faces in our pockets. <laughs> We only have so many faces in our pocket. You've had a lot of faces. And, and I want to spend the last few minutes going through some of the faces. I still, and I still my, 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 unfortunately, because of my madness, uh, <laughs> I feel like there's still a lot of faces in my pockets. So. Yeah. <laughs>